Hi, I'm Chris with the irrigation information website smartirrigation.com and today we have a guest technician who's going to show you how to program your Rainbird ESP or TM2 controllers while avoiding some of the common programming mistakes. Hi, my name's Justin. And today, I'll be walking you through how to program Rainbird controllers that have this central control dial here, such as the ESP series and TM2 controllers. Today, I'll be using the Rainbird TM2 controller as an example, but everything I show you will also work with the current ESP ME3 controller, which, as you can see, has a controller layout that is almost identical to that of the TM2. These instructions will also work for older Rainbird controllers with this central dial, such as these ESPTM and ESP modular controllers, with a few modifications that I'll be sure to point out. First, let's look at the layout of these dial-based controllers. The main menu selection is done with the control dial here, with the narrow point of the dial pointing to which menu item is selected from around the outer dial, such as the date and time menu. We can scroll through the items within the menu by using the left and right arrows and can increase and decrease the values of the selected items using the plus and minus buttons. There is also a program button, which we'll talk about a little later. The layout of older controllers is a little bit different. Instead of having arrow buttons to scroll through the items in each menu, the control dial itself is broken into menu sections with the items within each menu listed individually. For example, the date and time menu is found in the section here, and you can select the different items within the menu by moving the control dial to each of the items listed here. You can then increase or decrease the value of those items with the up and down arrows. If the selected menu item has items within it, such as the current date menu on the old ESP modular controller, those items can be scrolled through using the manual start or advance button seen here. There is also either a program button or a switch. Now that we're familiar with the controls, the first thing you always want to check when programming your controller is to make sure the date and time are correct. So let's use the control dial to select the date and time menu, then we can use the arrows to scroll through the different items and the plus and minus buttons to select the correct value. First the date and then the time. In hours, then minutes, and then finally the date format, either 12 hours or 24 hours. One of the most common mistakes that we see is that AM and PM on the clock are switched. So pay extra attention to that, or you can use the 24 hour setting if you prefer. Another important tip is to make sure you change your controller time with daylight savings time. On older style controllers, use the dial to select the various items in the date and time section of the dial. If the year isn't selectable, there will be an option to select the day of the week. With the date and the time set, you are now ready to start setting up your irrigation program. Sprinklers are typically grouped into different zones, with each zone being run by a different valve. In a program, the selected zones run one at a time, one after another, all starting at a particular time called the start time. We have more information about zones in our article about zone charts, which can be found at smartirrigation.com. The start time of your entire irrigation program is controlled by the next menu on the dial, called start times. For example, we can enter a start time of 2.15 a.m. using the plus and minus buttons to tell the program to start turning on the sequence of zones at 2.15 a.m. Where it says first to the left of the time here indicates that we are setting the first start time for all of the zones. Most irrigation programs should only have one start time. If we end up adding a second or third start time, now your sprinklers will be running three times a day. So in most cases, the rest of these start times should be off. The A to the far left indicates that we are setting the start times for program A, 
you can control which program you are adjusting by pressing the program button on the controller. You can achieve complex watering schedules by combining multiple programs together, which we can help guide you through in a later video if you ask for it in the comments below. But for now, we will focus on setting up a simple irrigation program under Program A. With the older style controllers, the program start times will either be listed separately under the Program Start Times section of the dial, as shown here, or they may be listed under the Watering Times menu, such as shown here, and can be scrolled through using the Advance button, shown here. One of the most common mistakes that we come across when people complain that their sprinklers are running at unexpected times is that multiple start times have been set or multiple programs have been set by mistake. Therefore, it's always helpful to quickly cycle through all of the start times under all of the programs to make sure only one is set and that the rest are off. Off can be found just before midnight. Next, we need to control which zones will be turning on for this program and for how long each of them will run. To do this, we select the Run Times menu with the control dial. Again, you want to check to make sure that the correct program is selected by making sure an A is showing on the display. The one under Station to the left of the time here is referring to the valve that was wired into the number one slot of this controller and the time we enter is for how long that zone of sprinklers will be running in hours and minutes. Since zone one is a set of rotors in a sunny area, let's set this run time to 55 minutes using the plus and minus buttons. Next, we can select zone two with the arrows, but this zone is broken right now, so let's leave it off with a run time of zero. Finally, we'll select zone three which is a zone of sprays in a shady area. So let's set this run time for 10 minutes. If you would like some guidance on selecting the proper run times for your irrigation zones, check out our article on watering times on our website, smartirrigation.com. With the older style controllers, each valve has its own menu item within the run time or station area of the controller, as shown here. Just move the dial to the zone number and enter the zone runtime using the up and down arrows. Finally, we need to set up on which days we want our program to run. To do this, we will select the watering days menu with the control dial. This menu can be a bit confusing because of the different options, so let's go through them one at a time. The first option that comes up is to simply select which days of the week you would like to or are allowed to have this irrigation program run. Again, make sure that the correct program letter is showing. Then you can use the arrows to select the day of the week and either the plus button to turn that watering day on or the minus button to turn that watering day off. Days of the week where the program will run have a raindrop underneath them, whereas days of the week where the program won't run either have a slash through a raindrop or simply have just a dash. If you use the arrows to continue past this section, you will enter into the interval watering menu. Setting this up is a bit more advanced, so we won't be covering it in this video, but if you would like us to make a video on properly setting up interval watering, let us know in the comments below. Finally, if you press both the left and the right arrows and hold them down, you will enter into even or odd day watering. For this program, let's go back to the weekly watering schedule. So we'll hold these buttons together again, and let's set up a simple Monday, Wednesday, and Friday watering schedule. So we'll go to Monday, turn that on with the plus button, Tuesday off, Wednesday on, Thursday off, Friday on, and Saturday and Sunday both off. With the old style controllers, each day of the week has its own position in the custom cycle section of the outer dial, as shown here. Here, you can select each day of the week and then use the up and down arrows to turn that watering day on or off. Just make sure that if your controller has the day cycle section at the bottom, that this is set to the custom position. Next, under the sensor menu, you can set up how you want your controller to work with an externally connected rain sensor. 
The default for this is bypass, which the controller is going to follow its regular schedule regardless of the readings of the rain sensor. If you would like the controller to stop watering when the rain sensor is active, you can turn this on to active using the plus sign. On older controllers, this is controlled with the toggle switch shown here. One of the most common problems that we come across when people complain that their sprinklers are not turning on is that they have a faulty rain sensor. You can work around this by bypassing the rain sensor using the plus button until you're able to have your rain sensor repaired. Now that you've created your program, the last thing you want to do is move the control dial to the seasonal adjust menu and check to make sure that this value is where you want it. This setting lets you change the watering time of all the zones up or down, which can be beneficial if it's been a particularly hot or rainy month. At 100%, the sprinklers will be running for their originally programmed time. But if it has been a particularly hot month, for example, we might want to increase the watering to 30%. So we would use the plus button to increase this number to 130. Now our first zone will be watering for 72 minutes and our third zone will be watering for 13. When you adjust the seasonal adjust, the run times actually change in the runtime menu so we can confirm our new run times by moving the control dial to the run times menu. One of the most common mistakes that we come across when people complain that their sprinklers are running for longer or shorter than they anticipated, it's typically because the seasonal adjust value has been shifted. So just be extra careful to make sure that this value is where you want it. Finally, before you leave your controller, you want to make sure that you tell the controller whether you would like it to run or not. If you do not want the controller to run for now, turn the dial to the off position here. Otherwise, if you would like the program to run during the next scheduled watering, make sure the central control dial is turned to the top auto position like this. There you have it. Now you know how to program your Rainbird ESP and TM2 controllers. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And remember to hit like and subscribe. And for more smart irrigation tips, check out our website at smartirrigation.com